As the great philosopher Bertrand Russell once said, war does not determine who is right, only who is left. The purpose of this discussion is to explore the tragic consequences of war and question the necessity of armed conflicts. Let's consider the human toll of war. A toll that doesn't discriminate affecting civilians including children as well as combatants. In the recent Russia-Ukraine and Israel-Palestine conflicts, countless innocent lives have been lost. Families have been displaced, communities shattered and the long-term impact on these societies is profound and pervasive. These are not faceless numbers but stories of everyday people, much like you and me, whose lives have been irrevocably altered by the brutal realities of war. From the child who has lost their home, to the parent who has lost a child, the human cost of war is a grim testament to its devastating power. Behind each statistic lies a story of a life irrevocably altered by the brutal realities of war. Conflict breeds conflict, creating a vicious cycle of violence that seems to have no end. The sad truth is that war, by its very nature, perpetuates a cycle of violence and revenge. It's like dropping a stone in a pond, the ripples spread out, touching everyone and everything in their path. Imagine this, one side retaliates for a perceived injustice, and the other side retaliates in turn. This cycle of revenge and counter-revenge can continue indefinitely, leading to prolonged conflicts that seem to have no resolution. Each act of violence is justified by a previous act, creating a narrative of victimhood and retribution that feeds the flames of conflict. This cycle of violence doesn't just impact the present, it also shapes the future, as the next generation inherits the anger and the pain of their predecessors. In the end, the cycle of violence only serves to deepen the wounds of war, making reconciliation an uphill task. War is often painted as a necessary evil, a last resort when diplomacy fails, but is it truly necessary? History has shown us that conflicts can be resolved without resorting to violence. Take for instance the peaceful dissolution of the Soviet Union, or the end of apartheid in South Africa. These were significant conflicts but they were resolved through diplomacy, negotiation, and the immense courage of individuals advocating for peace. It may seem like a monumental task, but peace is possible when we prioritize dialogue and understanding over aggression and force. We've seen the power of peaceful resolutions in the Good Friday Agreement in Northern Ireland and the peace process between North and South Korea. These examples not only highlight the potential of diplomacy, but also emphasize the importance of international cooperation and mutual respect. Perhaps it's time we question the narrative that war is inevitable and necessary. In the face of the devastating consequences of war, the call for peace becomes not just a wish, but a necessity. The human cost, the cycle of violence, the economic impact, the psychological trauma, and the destruction of infrastructure, these are the realities of war we've explored today. They paint a stark picture that challenges us to critically examine the necessity of armed conflicts. But what if we could redirect the resources, the energies, the lives that are lost in war towards peace, towards building bridges instead of walls? Imagine schools instead of bomb shelters, hospitals instead of battlefields, dialogues instead of gunfire. Peaceful initiatives and diplomacy don't just end conflicts, they prevent them. They foster understanding, respect and cooperation. They create a world where justice, security and sustainable development thrive. As we ponder the question, do we really need war? Let us remember that peace is not merely the absence of war but the presence of justice, security and sustainable development. It's a goal we must strive for, not just for ourselves but for future generations. Thanks for watching. If you like this video please subscribe and don't forget to share, likes and comment.